Oh, hello. I'm back from Germany and I may have went shopping. I had to use the wide angle lens to get this all in here. So let's talk about the show. Uh, so let's go with the games first so I can get them out of my face. From Fantasia and Lucky Duck Games, I got Unconscious Mind. This is releasing in Canada in February. Uh, this is a game where you are playing Assistance of Freud to heal your um, patients through DreamWorks and stuff like that. I am interested to see how sensitive or how insensitive this may end up being as a theme because I have gone through the therapy process. I am diagnosed. You all know that. Um, and Freud wasn't the most reputable therapist back in the day, uh, but it's a period piece. So we'll see how that goes. And it's got Vincent Dutrait art. So I got it anyways. <laughs> Uh, so that is really pretty. Also, I have to put these on the shelf that's behind you because this one's already full. Well, actually, so technically I'm going to put some of that stuff over there because I want you to see all the new things in the background. But that is Unconscious Mind. We have Babylon from Geek Attitude Games designed by Oliver Gregoire. Uh, this was hot, hot, hot because they only had 75 copies a day. This is a 3D... Uh, building game of Hangings of Babylon. It is a bit finicky. Um, I did get a chance to play this one while we were in Germany. Uh, a couple of people, hi Eileen and Deanne. Uh, if you see this, thanks for coming all the way up to my hotel in Dusseldorf. Uh, the walk from the train station was a little long, uh, but we got a chance to play that. Um, I like it. Uh, I definitely want to put a wash on that to see how it comes out. Um, but I don't have any of my painting stuff anymore, so I'm going to have to get that again and learn how to do that all over again. Uh, but I'm excited to play that some even more. Galileo Galilee is the other game that we also got to the table. This is by Tomas Holick, who is like the star of the show this year. They have three games, of which I have all three of them here. Uh, and so this is where we are astronomers in the age of the uh, church, uh, trying to, you know... Uh, we're trying to explore science while the church is trying to like stop it. So we have to please the church uh, by managing the Inquisition. It wasn't actually as hard to manage the Inquisition as we thought it would be once we figured it out. Um, definitely uh, look out for the review on that one because this one was really fun and really good. I liked that. Uh, Men Nefer, which is um, Egyptian for Memphis, which is one of the uh, first cities in Egypt. Uh, if you can hear the 3D printer in the background, that is because they have a partnership with um, SLD, uh, SL, 3D SLDE. Uh, and so they already have an insert ready for this for you to start printing. You can either buy the full insert for 60 euros uh, and have it shipped to you. Um, or like me, you can pay the five euros for the files and print it yourself. Um, so I don't have to design one for this one, um, but a couple of these are gonna need some inserts. Um, so we'll probably design some files for that eventually as well. Uh, but that is an ancient Egyptian worker placement game. I am told it is very long, um, but I love the theme and I love the artwork in it. Um, so I wanted to check that out. Um, I forgot to mention Babylon and Galileo Galilee currently don't have North American distribution. However, Geek Attitude Games does come to North America. That probably will be a, a released eventually. And Galileo Galilee, they are looking for a distribution partner. Uh, so they are working on getting it here. So you'll be able to get that soon. Mendifer uh, will be in North America through Asmodee. Thomas Holek's other game is Tea Garden. This is by Albi. This one I do not know about any distribution for. So I did grab that and it came with a promo. Uh, this one is we are uh, managing our tea farms. Uh, and that is literally all I know about it. I grabbed it because I grabbed all the rest of Thomas's games, so why not? On to some smaller box stuff, we've got Trick and Treat, which is a trick-taking Halloween game for a spooky season. Um, I'm also gonna, you know, highlight La Familiar Fort um, and some other uh, spooky games for Halloween, so keep a check out on that. Um, that is from Taiwan uh, and Ice Rain Games. I got this from the Taiwan board game uh, design booth. I don't know if they put their logo on this one, but they did put their logo on this one here. This is Hot Pot Holic, another trick-taking game, a little bit more interesting. We did get to play this one. The rules are very poorly translated, so it's kind of hard to understand at first. Once we've played it through, we reread the rules again, made a little bit more sense, so got to play this a few more times to see if we've really got the rules down pat, and then I'll probably come up with something to put on BGG. 
Chonker Party, we didn't get to the table, but this is a really cute trick-taking game um, where you continue on the trick until someone has out-trumped the trumping, um, and which is by playing a Chonker card, and then you're gonna count up the points from the cards. Uh, some of the points are negative, so that's kind of cool. Agent Avenue we have covered. However, now I have the printed edition of it. This was also really hot at the show because it was so quick to demo. Uh, I'll, we played it twice at the meet and play. People loved it and went and done to pick it up. Uh, and that is from Nerd Lab. Um, Nerd Lab did Mindbug, uh, so did these designers. So this will probably get to North America eventually. Loot, this one you cannot get. This is an exclusive to the con. Uh, this is a game by Skeelig Games. Uh, of course it's a game, so. Uh, but it was the Essen exclusive game. It is just a roll and write. It, it has nothing inside of this big giant box. So I had actually uh, shipped other games home in this box with me <laughs> because these small games uh, were in there. I had exactly 23 kilograms of games, which is the maximum for my check-in luggage. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, next up from Sorry We Are French, this is Factory of Dreams. This will also be coming in North America. Um, I wanted to grab Mary Curie and Shackleton Base, but they were just too hot to get and they'll get here eventually. So we will check those out eventually. From Thailand, instead of Taiwan this time, we have Cyan, from Cyan Board Games, Farland. This is a space simula a space farming simulator. Uh, what I thought was really cool about this game is if you're playing with less players or not in the advanced mode, you can just flip the board over and you hide a bunch of stuff instead of blocking spaces out. Uh, I'm excited to check this one out. It needs an insert. It also needs extra bags. It only came with one bag uh, for all of the pieces. So we will work on that as well. Ugh. Also from Tomas is Seti. This is another big heavy game. Um, it doesn't seem to be actually be that heavy. It's just physically heavy. Um, this box unfortunately did get damaged on the way home. Uh, it got crushed and it got punctured um, because it is so heavy. Uh, and there is a lot inside this. There's a lot of cardboard, but this is a space exploration game um, with a moving center board. That is really cool. Um, I got to meet Paul Grogan who did a uh, how to play video on this. So give that a check out. Paul is so sweet and so kind. Um, and it was so great to meet them. Whoa! Let's pull that away. Okay, let's get into the small stuff. Also from Sorry We Are French. Um, I had to take the throw the box away for this one uh, to make it fit. Um, but this is a calendar for 2025. And you are going through a, a dungeon. I think I got this backwards actually. Whee! Where's January? That's December. There we go. The calendar you can put on your desk. You have a magnetic explorer. Oh, it's a double magnet. I, I was wondering how that was gonna work. So you can put this on here to keep track of the days. Uh, what's weird though, is that you don't actually explore this dungeon day by day. And oh, that fell apart. It needs a stronger magnet. So I'll probably try and find a be better one for that. Uh, you don't actually explore the dungeon day by day. Um, you can go and defeat any of the monsters that are in the week and then you just cross out the monster. Um, and then I guess you can cross out the day of the week so you can actually use it as a calendar. Um, I think I'm gonna change the rules on this one um, to be if you don't win that day and you're just gonna have to keep a tally of winning and losing because there is a, a win spot up here um, throughout the month. So let's X out the ones you lost and check mark the ones you won. Uh, and just see what your score is at the end of the month and that by the end of the year, tally up your wins and losses because I think it makes way more sense to just battle each thing every day instead of battling things once a week. I mean, it's your game, do whatever you want with it. It also came with a little dice tray. Okay, uh, we picked up a bunch of upgrades, of course, for our games. Uh, these three are for my friend. Uh, we got stickers for Butoku. Um, there is a corgi with a helmet. That is so cool. Um, stickers for White Castle and stickers for Dog Park. And then for myself, I got stickies for Coffee Rush. Threw out the box for this one because it's only an expansion. This is the expansion to Forest Shuffle, Woodland's Edge. This was also hot, hot, hot. Asmodee only managed to catch up to stock supplies in English on Sunday. So I managed to get this last minute on Sunday. I got a set of Critters that are gonna be in uh, Critter Kitchen. This is just artwork from Sandra um, from a Cardboard Alchemy and Lucky Duck. Um, there's actually more of these somewhere in my bag. 
the expansion to Sky Team. Um, what's in here? Now that I'm home, I can open this up. Because it was bigger than I expected. I thought it was just going to be um, sleeves. Oh, there's a whole punch board in here. Okay, so there's the things that I expected to be here, which is more airports. Ton more airports. I don't actually play this game that often. I'm not sure why I got it, but I did it anyways. Um, oh, but there's actually new round things. So uh, our, our plane flies faster. And then, ah, okay, there's a rule book in here as well. That's why that's so, so large. So we've got all the new scenarios. This adds alarms, altitude tracks, approach tracks, penguins. I don't know what the penguins are for, but we'll see about that. I think um, these penguins are begging for a 3D print upgrade. Uh, I don't know where I'm going to put that now that I have made a mess. You didn't see anything, okay? Uh, from Lucky Duck as well is Tranquility. Uh, this is a cool little, um, like, card. I think they call them ladder games with, with your cards. Um, uh, but this is the second uh, version of Tranquility. I'm excited to check that out. Uh, for another friend, they had me pick uh, Simulu, C Simulo. I've never played any of these ones, but uh, them and their kids love it, so that's for them. Also, for my friend that's gotten the stickers, the White Castle promo number three from Devere. Thank you so much for giving that to me because I had I went up to their booth and like you just have to buy something. I'm like I already own all your games. See, they're over here. <laughs> uh, so I'm a big fan of there. Um, I did not get these at Essen uh, at Spiel. Uh, but they were there, which is the uh, mini escape rooms from Grand Gamers Guild. Uh, I tried to play these on the plane, but then forgot that you need Wi-Fi. Um, however, look for those coming up soon because there's a Kickstarter launching soon. Oh, okay, that's all the games. The last thing was this big giant bag. What's up? Uh, and with the bag and... Oh, wait, no, this is the cute side. He's meeps and he's sleeping. It's not Bo, though. Oh, oh, he heard me. He's coming. You're going to come say hi, Bo? Come here. Come say hi. Yeah. Um, I wish I had Bo. I did have a couple of breakdowns while I was there. Come here, buddy. Up, up. Uh, I gave you, I, I gave you uh, ideas on how to survive Essen as an autistic, but I didn't tell you about the travel part because this was the first time I was traveling without Bo uh, in such a long distance. Uh, I ended up having two breakdowns. Air Canada was not the most pleasant. Uh, Euro wings definitely also not the most present. They're refusing to replace the coat I had to buy because they delayed my luggage. Uh, so shame on them. Um, I've had to submit with the government authorities that uh, oversee them. Uh, and then I've also resubmitted with Air Canada because Canadian laws allow us to submit with both parties. Uh, and so we'll see if we get any action there. Uh, and I traveled with in, in a credit card that has insurance on it. So I've also flied with the insurance. So some way or another, I should be compensated for the thing, the delayed bag. Um, my flight was delayed by five hours. Um, that was stressful. Uh, but I did finally get to Germany on Thursday night. I went in to the show, bought most of this stuff, brought it home in this giant bag because I didn't have my roller bag. And then Saturday morning, went to the airport, picked up my bag, packed everything. It was like, okay, I have room for like two more games. Um, and on Saturday, I managed to get rid of all of the games and the maple syrup that I brought for everyone. Uh, so that was good. I gave Paul his little Titan um, that I had 3D printed. He, he thought he's uh, the autistic in me not getting jokes. It was a joke. He actually did say three foot tall and I printed a three inch one because that's what I thought he said. Uh, but anyways, so he got he got a Titan instead of all the candy that he always gets. <laughs> Uh, and then overall, the show was packed. It sold out every single day. Uh, Sunday sold out the slowest, uh, and Sunday was the slowest day, but it was so nice because it was relaxing. On Sunday, I actually did get to sit down and play some games. So I also tried out Tree Society, which I want to see what the price point is going to be because the production value is honestly very poor. Um, it's an Asmodee game. I, was, I looked at it, and I'm like, this is, I, I hope this is a prototype you're showing me at uh, Spiel because uh, the, the, the quality of the cardboard they use, it's not even cardboard, they use cardstock that is less cardstock than I would put in my printer, um, which was really bad. Um, so that's Tree Society, but the game itself was good. I liked the game, it was a cool little set collection building and um, more resource management economy kind of game, which is really cool. I also got to try, I didn't try out, but I got to listen to the demo of Rebirth. So I 
put a pre-order in on that. And with that, the games that you don't see here that were at us and that I'm getting, I have Black Forest from Uwe Reisenberg and Furland games to pick up today at the game store. Uh, that that pre-order is ready. Intarsia, I got to take a look at. Those wooden pieces are indeed as cool as I thought they would be. Uh, so I have a pre-order for that. Middle Ages from Studio, it was either Studio H or Hachette. I can't remember right now. Uh, I have a pre-order for that as well waiting for me, uh, waiting for it to release as well. Uh, and then I also did a pre-order. There's one more game. I have four other games that I bought uh, on pre-order because it was cheaper to buy them here in Canada than North America. Like these ones are ones that aren't going to be here for a while. These are early access kind of stuff, um, except for SETI. SETI comes out in two or three weeks, I believe, here in North America. Um, so keep your eye on for that. Uh, food, great. I had currywurst. I have uh, sausage thawing in the fridge right now. I'm going to make some currywurst. It's really just ketchup and curry powder mixed together. Um, but I had one that was actually a teriyaki sauce or a honey garlic sauce. One or the other. I can't quite remember which one was mixed with the uh, curry uh, powder instead of ketchup and curry powder. So that was really interesting. Um, of course, French fries with mayonnaise uh, or French fries with garlic aioli. Delicious. Pretzels. Pretzels with cheese. Pretzel buns. Um, deli meat for breakfast, uh, <laughs> which is very odd, um, which I ironically had this morning. Um, because I had deli meat in my fridge because I have to go grocery shopping because there's nothing left in my fridge. Uh, and then what else was there for food? And then sightseeing, I went and saw a couple of cool spots in Dusseldorf because I had to go buy uh, some new clothes and shopping. I also got this shirt uh, and I got the purple version of it from Board Game Geek. Um, and I think that covers everything. The way home was uneventful, thankfully. The flights were both on time. My luggage made it. We made it through passport control just in the nick of time to get onto the plane. The food on the plane was okay. Uh, I kept eating my snacks. Oh my gosh, I forgot the snacks. I brought back so many snacks. Uh, and thank you to everyone that brought me snacks. Um, I got some stuff from the Netherlands. I got some stuff from France and I got some stuff from Germany. Uh, and then at the airport, I bought more stuff from Germany. Um, so some Miam uh, candies, which are like Starbursts here. Uh, some Kinder Surprise candies. They got Choco Bonds which is like a hazelnut cream filled candy that you can't get here in Canada, uh, but you can get other Kinder can candy here. Didn't get Raider Sport or Harry Bow because uh, they both are available here. Uh, and then from the Netherlands, I got uh, Kuruda. I don't know how to say it, but it's basically chocolate covered gingerbread. Um, and I got uh, Chocoladas. No, Chocolata is chocolate. Um, speculas. I got Speculas, which is also uh, gingerbread, which is so delicious and um, Mozart pistachio chocolates. Uh, I don't like them so much, but my boyfriend probably will. He loves pistachio. Um, and that's it. I'm very excited to play all these games. Um, I sent a big giant list to my friends and said, when are you available? Because we need to be gaming nonstop now uh, to get these all out to you. Um, so make sure you like, subscribe, and follow along. We'll get all of these covered as well as the rest of these covered throughout the rest of the year and into next year. Next event is PAX Unplugged. Uh, if you're going to be there, let me know in the comments below and we will see you next time. Bye.